Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, Getting Started with Adobe Design, Tips and Tricks for Your Next Annual Report with Marisa Vitiello. I am your host and chat facilitator, Lashika Phillips. I'll share a little bit more about our presenter later. And as you can see here from this slide, we have our Adobe Stock experts on the line with us as well. They will actually be in the chat for any questions that any of our learners may have as we go through the presentation with Marisa. Before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk. You should know that all of the lines are muted, and so if you have any questions, we encourage you to use the chat box. You can chat your questions there, and someone from our team will respond. If for some reason you get knocked off, you can simply join the webinar using the same registration link and telephone number. Please know that as soon as this webinar is over, you will receive an email with the presentation and a lot of resourceful links and slides. If you are on Twitter, we encourage you to tweet us at TechSoup or use hashtag T, uh, TSWebinars. Also want to bring to your attention our mission here at TechSoup. Our mission is to build a dynamic bridge enabling civil society organizations and social change agents around the world like, like you, like your organization, our goal is to help you gain effective access to the resources that you need in order to design and implement solutions for a more equitable planet. And we do that right here in San Francisco. And at this time, we want to know where you are joining us from today. So this is a perfect opportunity to test out the chat box. You can chat where you are joining us from right now. Where, where are you? Where are you joining from? Wow, we have Ontario, Canada, and Vegas. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your locations. We have Alberta, Canada. Thank you so much for joining. And I just want to mention that all of the places that, that I've just mentioned, as well as the shaded areas here on the slide before you, these are areas in which, in which we provide donation products and resources for nonprofits. And we're very happy that you are all joining us here today. We partner with companies like Microsoft and Symantec and Cisco and all other technology providers from around the world. And I highly recommend you check out our website. It's TechSoup.org. And I encourage you to check out our Nonprofit Favorites section. And so today, we have actually partnered with Adobe to bring you tips and tricks for your next annual report with Marisa. And as an educational consultant, she has overseen multiple local and international media collaborations for Adobe Youth Voices program. She's also designed three books and created curriculum to teach urban planners and architects how to build gathering spaces with communities. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Marisa. Hello, everybody. This is Marisa Vitiello, uh, and I am honored to be here. Thank you, TechSoup. Thank you all from, gosh, all over the place for being here. And also thank you to my colleagues at the Adobe Stock Template team for being in the chat answering some of the questions that you all ask. So. If you, if you get answers from people in the chat box, you'll know who they are. Today we are going to talk a little bit about designing compelling annual reports. And I have a couple of good tools for you uh, using Adobe InDesign and Adobe Stock, kind of a three for one. A little bit about design, a little bit about templates. We're going to talk about annual report objectives and content. I'll give a summary of key annual report challenges. We'll talk about why you need graphic design in your annual report, and how to leverage Adobe technology to create compelling content. We'll also have time for a Q&A at the end, and it will, this, um, this webinar will be recorded so you can refer back to it. So the objectives of any good annual report include 
ensuring regulatory compliance, showing donor engagement, highlighting your organization's achievements. And the contents might include an executive report, an organization history and or highlights, financials, fundraising efforts, grant reports, and your organizational achievements. The key annual report challenges that you folks are probably already aware of is that many nonprofits lack design resources. Organizations are not always aware of or don't know how to utilize design software options. That's part of why we're here today. And newer nonprofits mistake financial data and metrics for storytelling. Most people would prefer a story to a bunch of numbers. So why focus on design? This page in the background is from an annual report I wrote for Real Girls um, years ago. And it's, uh, you know, it's decently laid out, but it's a lot of words. And I think a lot of um, agencies that see annual reports get lots and lots of words in their inboxes. So focusing on reports, allow, uh, sorry, focusing on design allows people to not be so overwhelmed and be more drawn in. Not everybody wants to read page after page of words after words. So adding an element of design will help. Focusing on the adding design elements allows us to see who, allow, oh, sorry, allows you to share who you are. It allows you to share why you care. This is a gorgeous annual report that I'll show you more of from an organization called Arts Corps here in Seattle where I live. And it um, uses the theme of rising against adversity, very current um, annual report. Another reason to add design to your annual report is to show who your constituents are, who your community is, and how powerful they are, how, how they are making a difference in their own communities. And to show the accomplishments. This is a Girl to Code, to show some of the accomplishments of the, uh, your community. Another reason is to show data in ways that are interesting to people, in ways that draw people in, in ways that don't overwhelm your audience. So this page, again, is from ArtsCore. To review, why design? To put a face on your organization and why you care. To help people see your community and your shared efforts. To share your accomplishments. To show essential data in an interesting way and to tell your supporters that their money is well spent and call them to action. So I would say the most important thing about good design is not trying to do too much. This is a fairly simple page with a little bit of information. There's a lot of spaciousness about it. Don't try to tell your entire story. This, you, you can use simple tools. You don't have to go overboard on trying to learn everything. Start simple. Consider instead of creating an entire report in, in a graphic design format, consider include, including just an add-on page. Uh, the annual report that I showed you earlier with just all that text, I also included a comic book for my annual report. It was, you know, I had lots of kids doing cool things, so I could make a little comic where I showed them making films. And, um, and that went over really well, because you know, the, the city organization that was looking at it was so relieved to be able to see something fun and light and yet still informative. Include a message from the director, your mission, and some information about programs information and, or data about successes and failures, call outs to your supporters, including funders, staff, and board. Always great to recognize people and all of the ways that they are included as well. Include stories or quotes, personalizing what you're, you know, what you're showing, like this quote over on the left. And possibly a call to action or information about going forward. 
If your annual report is long, as this more than 60-page annual report by the International Medical Corps, include navigation. Consider including navigation. And that's something you can do in InDesign once you have some experience in InDesign. So Robin Williams Design Basics. When I was first starting out doing graphic design, and I'm, I'm almost solely um, self-taught. Uh, when I was starting out, I read a book called Robin Williams Design Basics. It's a different Robin Williams than you might be familiar with. And Robin Williams called for uh, four basic ideas to organize your design around. And it's pretty memorable as an acronym, contrast, repetition, alignment, proximity. I'll let you puzzle out the acronym. Contrast. We rise in large letters. It's a pretty bold contrast. Not that there, there's contrast on this page, but there, I would emphasize to think about a little bit of contrast. Not, it can be bold contrast. Bold contrast is great. We rise is gigantic. Family is also contrasting because it's red and it's uh, also pretty bold. But you don't have a whole lot of different fonts on the page. You don't have a whole lot of different um, things trying to jump out at you at once. It's, uh, when you have too many things jumping out at you, it's kind of like having too many, food, too many foods of different flavors on your plate. Think about organizing around one particular flavor. So add contrast. Repetition. You notice that the style of the text from We Rise is repeated here in We Build. So you can have repetition across a page. You can also have repetition across multiple pages. Repetition ties the document together. You have the same color as the first page, the, we build, the um, subtext, the family, in this red background. So there's a lot of tying things together through repetition. Alignment. Alignment organizes your page. It organizes it into certain fragments so that people don't have to, again, sort of look for the beginning of every line. I personally have a pet peeve against center alignment. I once saw an emergency, um, emergency paperwork for a school I worked for all center aligned. Center aligned can be fine for a really short document, but each time you're looking for the beginning of a new line, you, you could be losing the thread of the last page. So alignment, just clean shapes, creating clean shapes so people are less overwhelmed is really important. And proximity. This is a lot of information. It's math. Therefore, it can be really overwhelming and really um, quite upsetting to a lot of people who don't feel comfortable with math or data. By creating by adding proximity, by putting things into sections, we are less overwhelmed and therefore want to engage the, with the material. So really trying to help people, uh, people absorb things is the goal of graphic design. Again, the essential elements and design tips. Keep it spacious and simple. You don't have to tell the whole story graphically. A design document can be an add-on to a text-heavy document. Include visuals of your community, navigation if your document is long, a note from the director, essential data, testimonials, and keep crap in mind. Contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. I'm going to move over to demo Adobe InDesign and stock templates. You do not need to uh, you do not need to follow along at this point. Um, you, you might want to listen, but you don't need to do what I am doing. So you don't need to open InDesign. Again, this will be recorded. So if you don't follow something completely, hopefully you can go back and check it out. I've also included some resources for you. And I think, sorry, I am checking that I make sure to make sure that I'm sharing all the right 
screens. I feel like I'm forgetting one. Okay, while I'm doing this, you can be chatting, uh, putting questions into the chat pod. Again, the template team should be helping to answer. And thank you again to you guys. All right, so hopefully at this point you see my screen. I am in InDesign. I'm in InDesign CC, uh, the latest version, so Creative Cloud, the latest version. You can do everything that I'm doing pretty much today in, uh, in CS6 if you only have access to CS6. The steps might be a slight bit different, but you can do what I'm doing. So when you get to the screen, it looks a little not daunting so much, but it's like create new over here, create new over here. There's always lots of ways to do things in Adobe, um, in all Adobe products. It's uh, what I used to love the fact that when I was teaching high school, I was always wrong. That was a great thing about teaching high school. So I am today going to show you first how to create a new document, a pretty basic document. I'm going to go to Create New. And ignore the fact that I have some recent documents because you won't have recent documents, most likely. Um, however, we have a series of different options up here that provide presets, they, they provide starting places for a document to make sure your settings are correct. Again, ignore what's below. We'll get back to that. So I have options like print. I can say, oh, I want to work with a letter format. It's my intention is to output this on paper. I want, to I want to use the print intent. Or maybe my intention is to, use, to put my document on the web, so I might choose the web preset ditto for mobile. For today, I'm going to start you with print. I'm going to choose letter. And you'll see over on the right side that we have some, uh, already, some assumptions based on letter. So a letter is an 8.5 by 11 page. I also can set the orientation um, to portrait or landscape. I'm going to use portrait. And I can add pages. So for now, I'm just going to add three pages. I'm going to make it a three-page document, rather. And I can add columns. I can change my margins. I can also mess with bleed and slug, which you don't need to be concerned with at this very moment. But it's basically to allow printers to have a little extra space on the edges to cut your page. I'm going to hit Create. And now my screen changes. I'm just going to close these to make it a little less confusing. So when you first open InDesign CC, it should look something like this, ignoring the colors on the right, because these are individual to me. These are some colors that I have collected. Um, if your page, when you first go into InDesign, doesn't look this way, you're going to want to go to Workspace Reset Essentials. There's different kinds of workspace depending on the kinds of ways you might work. And um, so the, it'll just reorganize the, page, the uh, screen. What we have over here is we have a series of tools on the left. And if I click around on these tools, Notice what happens in the top area here. Notice how my screen changes. These are my options for each of the tools. So there are my settings for each of the tools. Today, and also notice that if I hold my cursor patiently over a tool, I might see what the tool is called. It says selection tool, the escape. So if I hit the selection tool, I'm now in that tool. I hit the Type tool, I'm now in that tool. I also have a few tools hiding underneath the tools. If I press and hold, I have other options. As long as there's a little triangle on the bottom right, that's when I know I have those tools. So for today, we're going to mostly work with the Selection tool, the Type tool, the Rectangle Frame tool, the Rectangle tool, and these colors down here. There might be one other thing, but that's basically it. On the right, you'll see a series of windows, including my pages that I created, one, two, three, layers, which we'll get back to possibly. Um, you'll notice that as I click, to I click them to open by clicking on the text. I click them to close. 
We also have links. Um, it's important to note that InDesign basically uh, links to different documents in, and that it's really important that you make a folder for all your photos and things that are going to go into the document. Here I'm hoping you can see my finder here. I have a series of documents that I've already put into a folder to organize myself. Uh, and I'm not going to move them until I publish this document. Uh, we will not work with stroke and color today. We will work with swatches. And I have just a series of the basic swatches for now. If I lose a window or I want to find other windows, which we will need to do, I'll go under Window in the menu, and I can find other, other um, windows. And when I say lose, I mean if I accidentally say close that window, um, which is possible to do. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. And what I'm going to do, um, in order to prepare for this webinar, uh, I, when we decided that we were going to use Adobe Stock Templates, I decided that I wanted to test the templates by volunteering for our friend's dojo. It's a nonprofit uh, Aikido dojo. And they need annual reports just like most of you. Um, and so I decided that I would test out the, the um, possibilities of the template and get to know them for this workshop uh, by, using, by creating a, um, an annual report. So I will show you that in a couple minutes. But for now, I am going to want to start to lay out the page without the template. Um, just as a just as a, an example, and so that you get to know a little bit of these tools. So I can't just click and type here. Uh, if you see me trying, but I'm clicking on the screen. I can't just click and type anywhere the way I might be able to in Word or other programs. I need a text box. I need boxes for things in order to put things in those boxes. So I'm going to click. I oops. I think I did that too fast. I, I have my type tool. You'll see it's selected because it's darker. I'm clicking on the upper left of my screen of my page, and I'm dragging to the lower right of an air, to create an area that I can type in for now. I'm going to type. Um, I'm going to type. And there I have Seattle IT Kai, hopefully spelled right as I'm practicing. But it's kind of small. It's not very interesting. Um, it's Seattle Minion, which or <laughs> Minion Pro, which I like, but it's not amazing um, for this purpose. So I, I, I'm highlighting this type to change it, and I'm going to the top. And I'm going to choose Avenir, because that's a bold, lovely sans serif font that I am enjoying these days. Uh, I want it to be bigger, so I'm going over here in the options on the top, and I'm going to change my type to make it pretty big. And then maybe I want to change it so that it's light instead of, I don't always want things to be bold um, when they're titles. They're already big. They don't necessarily need to be bold too. So I just changed it to light. And now I have a little bit of a title. Um, going against what I said earlier, maybe I want to center it. Maybe I don't, but for now, let's center it. Up here in the middle, I can click on Center. I can also grab my, type, my selection tool, and I can drag it around. I can decide I want it lower in the page, for instance, because I'm not going to have much on this page. Then maybe, possibly, I want a shape in the background, just something to create that sense that it's a cover. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle below. Now, that rectangle is not very interesting because it, you might see I have no fill and I have no stroke. I can switch these back and forth. Nope, not unless I fill it. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to add a fill, and you can see I'm still selective. These are still, they still have little boxes around them. So I'm going to go 
to swatches, and I'm going to add a color. None of these are very dojo-like colors, so it's not so, in, not, not so great, but for now it will do. And I'm going to click away when I'm satisfied or vaguely satisfied. And then I might want an image. I'm going to, I need a box to put my image in, so I'm going to drag out a rectangle. I'm grabbing from my rectangle tool. I've selected it by clicking on it. And I'm going to click and drag on top of that shape, to fill part of the shape, until I get to the edge. Now I want to place my image. So I'm placing it, and that is creating a link, again, to the folder where I put it originally. To find place, I go to File. And sometimes I use shortcuts, so I have a hard time finding these things. File, Place. And I'm looking in the folder that I made for all of you, the Webinar Dojo folder for this work workshop. And I have an Aikido Hero image. Now, you may or may not notice that this image is not showing up the whole image. I actually don't have my whole image. So I want to make sure that the image is filling this box, or at least sort of, at least as much as possible, because the image and the box might not be the same proportion. So I'm going to right click, and I have fitting, and I have fit, fit content proportionally. I don't want it to stretch or do anything funny to fit that space. And then to size it, this can be a little bit confusing. I'm clicking away. I'm clicking on it again. Actually, let me fit the frame to the image too. I'm going to fit the frame to the content so that the content stays the same size. And now I am holding down Shift and Command. I believe on a PC that would be Shift and Control. And I'm just dragging out that edge until I get to the same edge as the red box because that's the design I have chosen. And it might take a little fiddling. I will say that I fiddle and fiddle and fiddle forever when I am doing any design project. Um, this is a good beginning. It's, uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it advanced design, um, but I would say it already is fairly simple. It's not taking up too much space. This is a good start. If you are a new designer, I would say there's no reason you can't do something like this. But I think by starting with Adobe Stock Templates, you might have an easier time getting to know InDesign and getting to know design. So that's what we're going to work on next is work as creating a longer, a similar document in Adobe Stock Templates. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, New, Document. And you might see that I already have some templates here. These are free templates, which is pretty amazing. Templates on things like simple classroom work layout, work, workbook layout. That's kind of cool. Or a brochure layout. Or maybe you want to make a business card. So these are already templates designed by designers, and they are free. So that's amazing. I did not, however, find a free annual report template that I really thought was right for us for today. So I found another annual report template that happens to cost a little bit of money. I believe it's $9.99. The prices range from $9.99 to $39.99 on the templates, and, um, and we're going to search for one. So at the bottom of this screen, at the bottom of the Command New screen, I or Control New, I am going to type in Annual Report and see what we have for Annual Reports at Adobe Stock Templates. It brings me into the Internet, onto the web. Uh-oh, I hope you can see that. I'm going to just switch back over to the ReadyTalk screen to make sure because I'm a little bit afraid I forgot to click that. Um, so I'm resharing. Sorry about that. InDesign. Okay. I'm 
Okay, here we are. Hopefully you see this now, my Safari page. Um, I am in Adobe Stock. The system from InDesign automatically opened me into the, uh, onto the browser to find the annual report search. And I'm in the Adobe Stock page. All of these templates that you see here are InDesign templates because we came from the InDesign application. However, I'd just like to show you that if you click View Filters, you have a choice of templates created for Photoshop, created for Illustrator, created for InDesign, or created for Premiere Pro, or you can just search for all. And it will show you all of the options. In this case, it's an annual report, so it seems that we pretty much are, most of them are InDesign anyway. But here's an Illustrator one down here, just a couple of Illustrator ones. So for today's workshop, I chose this one, down, this one at the top left. It's called Annual Report Layer with Teal Elements. Annual Report Layout with Teal Elements. If I click on my eyeball, I can see a preview of this. And you can see that it's very colorful, but it's beautifully laid out, pretty interesting. Uh, it has a lot of pages. Um, and it looked to me like it was going to be useful for my Aikido annual report with a bunch of adaptations. And I want to say now, I'll say it again, that the, uh, the templates are just starting places. So these colors are not very Aikido-esque. Aikido is a pretty serious martial arts. So you'll see that I changed those pretty radically. Um, there were this little weird star thing doesn't really belong for a dojo, so we just get rid of it. So I'm going to close that up and just show you that if you are going to license it, there's an area over here to license. You do have to sign up for an account. I work for Adobe, so I have an account, um, which is great. I get to download lots of different images and, um, and templates and use them um, for my work at Adobe. So there's lots and lots of choices out there. Okay, we, I've already downloaded this, so you don't have to watch me do that. Um, I'm going to close up here. And I'm going to open a version of this where I downloaded it and I changed the colors a little bit so that you don't have to watch me do that completely. Okay, now I am in Adobe InDesign CC. And I have my annual report open. I did get rid of a couple of things. Again, I didn't think you necessarily needed to watch me do that. So I made a couple of little adaptations. But we'll do lots more. So the first thing I want to do, I did change some of my colors to make it a little bit uh, more serious. Um, not that colors aren't serious, but a little, a little darker, a little browner. Uh, to match the dojo's colors, but I want to change the blue. The blue is not very useful to me. So I'm choosing swatches, and you'll see that as part of the template, they've already assigned certain objects to certain colors. So this here is this color one currently, and other things are assigned color two, color three, all of those different things. So if I if I could find an element, I might be able to see, I can see it's gray. It chooses gray because I picked this element. I want to change first this color one to match my color theme. I'm going to double click it. And over here, I have color mode CMYK. In my case, because I'm printing this, and this is something that if you don't understand it, don't worry about it for now. But because we're printing it and because we're putting it online, we're using RGB color mode. So I just switched from color mode CMYK to color mode RGB. And down here at the bottom, I have what's called a hex code. And it's basically the color name. That's the color name for this blue in RGB. That's not the color I want. I have the color I want over here in my Word document. So I'm switching over to my Word document, and I'm grabbing color one where I 
tried to keep track of all my information for the dojo. Going back to InDesign, and I'm, so I copied that and I'm pasting it into the bottom here, Command V. And I'm just going to say OK, and now it has turned brown and yummy. All right, so that's a good start, getting a little bit more appropriate to Seattle IT Kai. But we're going to do a lot, we have to do a lot more things. First of all, I don't have any use for this map. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm just going to delete it. So all I did is I had my arrow tool. I'll do that again. I have my arrow tool or selection tool. I'm clicking on it until it's selected. I'm hitting delete. Next, I would like to change my text because it doesn't want to say corporate annual report. We want it to say Seattle IT Pi annual report. So I'm highlighting. And I am going over to my Word document again, and I'm copying Seattle IT Pi so that I make sure I spell it right, and I'm pasting it in. And now I have this text. It's white, which I don't think is necessarily the best thing on this brown. So I'm going to highlight all of it, and I'm going to change it to black. I also like this little line, but maybe I want it to be a different color, so I'm going to choose color six. Now I click away, and I have a pretty boring document, but not too bad as a start. So next, I want to add that image, that Seattle hero image. And again, I will need a box, a rectangular frame, rectangular frame. So I'm going to click on it and on uh, the tool, and I'm going to click and drag out my rectangle to place my image in. When I go to File Plate, I, will, I see that the shortcut is Command D. If you see in the menu, there's, it, it tells you. So I'm going to, in the future, use Command D. But for now, we're doing File Plate. And I'm going to go to Aikido Hero. That's my front page image. Again, it does not fill the page, so I could right click. And I could say Fitting, Fit Content Proportionally. Or another way to do it is up here. And honestly, I usually use the right click, but um, I was watching a tutorial the other day, and I realized, oh, sometimes I do things the long way. So I'm going to fill frame proportionally. And there, it looks pretty good. I don't even need to resize it this time. That's kind of nice. Um, however, I might want to move it around a little bit. I'm going to grab my selection tool, and I'm just going to click inside of it and move it a little bit up. Again, you could fiddle with this for a good long time, and I probably would if you weren't watching. Uh, so next, I want the logo. And we're going to do this little, well, we're, we'll still need a rectangle frame tool, or a rectangle frame. So I'm clicking and dragging that out. And I probably want it to align with the top and bottom of this, of my text. Um, maybe to fit it exactly, I don't know. Uh, instead of using, putting it in my file for the moment, just for fun, I put the logo in my libraries. I started to make a library for Seattle IT Kai. And this is an Adobe uh, Creative Cloud library. This you would need to have cloud access. But I believe if you just have a an Adobe ID, you have cloud access, and, but it might not link to your account. So don't quote me on that one. I'm going to grab my, you see that in my library, I have all those colors that I've tracked, and I have my logo. So this is a really nice way to, um, a really nice way to keep track of things. And apparently, I don't need my box. Let me see if I just click in there, so I'll put it in my box. Okay, nope. Uh, I'm just going to click and drag that out instead and make a box for it. And something's going wrong. Yay. Okay. Well, let's go find that then. I need to find inside my, do my dojo file, my logo, and here there's a couple of them. Okay. Well, apparently that didn't work for today, but we'll figure it out. Um, so I'm clicking, I'm moving this over. Again, I need to line it up a little bit better. Maybe I want it to be smaller. And so I'm going to 
hold my shift and command or shift and control key, and I'm just dragging it in to make it a little bit smaller. If I knew the size that I wanted, I could also go up here and change the width and the height. Um, that's for those of you who are more mathematical than I am, I guess. Um, I also might want to line this up again. I'm just lining the border up with the borders of my text. So fiddling with it. And that looks pretty decent. I'm having a hard time telling how it looks, though, because there's all these columns here. So I want to show you that you don't have to look at all those columns. They are useful. Um, in fact, maybe I should have used them and moved this over a little bit. They're useful, but they um, sometimes get in the way of actually seeing what things look like. I'm going to click away so nothing's selected. And then I'm going to the bottom of the tools, and instead of normal, I'm using preview. And now we can see it without all those pesky lines. And I would say I might want to make my logo a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder, and that feels better to me. I think maybe a little bit closer, so ignoring those lines that were so kindly provided. Okay, that is better. I'm going to go back to uh, the normal mode just so we can continue to see the, the guides. And now I'd like to add a company website at the bottom. I'm double clicking in this area and I'm going to my Word document to copy that. And I'm copying it without the space. This took me a while and a lot of pain to realize that if you have if you bring the space in, you can actually have serious problems with hyperlinks. I'm going to company website. I have it already highlighted. I'm command being. And you'll notice at the bottom, hopefully, you might not be able to see this. I might need to zoom in. Notice there is a little red box, a little red mark here, and my text is not completely filling the screen. That means I have overset text. My text was bigger or longer than the original box. So I am going to just drag out the corner until I see the text, and then I'm going to drag it in a little bit, and I'm going to zoom back out. So if you see that, that will that'll happen actually quite often that you have overset text, um, and that's a little too zoomed out. I'm going to click inside the text, and I'm just going to move it around until I see that pink line that tells me my text is centered. Again, my, I, I want to make sure I'm only centering the text, not a bunch of spaces around it. So I'm just doing that a little bit again. And the one thing I forgot to do is to make this into a hyperlink. So if people are receiving this online as a, as a PDF, they might want to be able to hyperlink directly from the document. I'm going to double click it, I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to hyperlink new hyperlink from the URL. And now I have a hyperlink. It's blue. It's all good that way. Okay. I think I am going to show you a couple more things quickly um, and don't want to run out of time. So before we forget, we want to save this document. Right now it is a template. So we don't want to file save. We want to file save as. I'm going to file save as, and I'm going to name it Seattle. IT Kai, annual report, and I'm going to make sure it's a document, not a template. I'm going to save, and I am going to just show you that you can also delete pages here. If I click on the pages over here, I can click in the pages. I, for instance, I don't want this annual, I don't want this um, table of contents. I can hit delete and say OK. And then I can also delete. I don't want to delete that. So I'm feeling a little bit short on time, but I'm going to show you a couple more things quickly. Um, these concepts are all pretty much the same. I would add text the same way. I would add an image the same way. So now I'm just going to do it quickly. I'm clicking on the box. I'm doing Command-D. And I'm going to find my Daniel image and paste it in. I want to move that around. You might see the circle in the middle. 
I'm going to click and drag until I'm happy with the image. I also want to add a letter right here. So I'm going to add a letter right here at the bottom. I'm going over to my Word document, and I'm finding Dear Dojo Community, and I'm copying it. I'm copying it into this window here by highlighting everything. I'm just going, actually, I'm going to highlight everything, and I'm going to paste it. And you see it shows up right in there, and it spreads from one box to the next because of the settings. The, there's not a ton of spaciousness between lines, and so I want to add a little space afterwards. Most people who don't who aren't designers would just go in and click a bunch of returns. Personally, I prefer to add space after. If you see at the top, if I hold my cursor up here, I can add space after each section that I want space after, or I can recognize that because this template was created with styles, that I can put space after everything that has a little bit, that, that is this particular text type. I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to open my Styles, Paragraph Styles. And I see that this is a description left. Whoops, trying to move it out of the way. Right here I see it's description left. I'm right clicking. And I'm going to edit description left. And I'm going to change my indents and spacings by adding space after right here. And adding a little bit of space after. And everywhere that uses this description left is going to automatically have a little bit of space after the paragraph. OK, last thing I want to show you. So I'm going to save. I'm just doing Command F. And I want to, sh you need to, you can't just send an InDesign document to your pals or your fans or your mom. You need to send a PDF. Uh, the InDesign document is just a series of links and some text in it, um, but you won't have these images if you try to send the, the InDesign document. So you want to export it as a PDF. We're going to go to File, Export, and I have already, it says Adobe PDF. My intent is print. I already have it named. I'm going to hit Save. And I want to make sure that I get the, all the pages. I want to make sure that I get the hyperlinks. And then we're just going to export it. There's overset text on 6, 8, 10, 14. These are, image, these are pages that we did not edit, so we don't need to worry about this. If there were pages that we were editing, you would need to make sure that you don't have any text outside the text box that you actually want. I'm just going to say OK. And now in your files, you should have a Seattle IT Chi annual report PDF if you have made one. So that is unfortunately all that I have time for at the moment with, um, with InDesign templates, but I do want to just remind you that practice with practice and with working with these templates, you will learn a lot about design. And um, I have confidence in you guys that you can do this. Let's, I'm going to switch back over to our slides. And we have a chance, we have a little time for Q&A. Hi, thank you again, Marisa. This was so helpful, a lot of information. And there are a couple of questions um, some of our learners had. Let's see. So uh, we want to find one student asked, is there an easy way to stop content from bleeding onto from one page to to the next? So your content bleeding from one page to the next depends on your threading and how, how you um, link between one paragraph and the next. If they are not threaded together, then they should not uh, bleed from one to the next. Um, deleting that thread can sometimes be hard. Um, I would invite RF to answer that one in the chat if, uh, if RF can. Um, but that, yes, it is totally doable. Uh, I see another question. Okay. Is there a feature where the swatch, yes. swatches act like a style sheet in MS Word? 
You know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It would be helpful. Um, so, well, I mean, when you're in the swatches, you're putting those in, but they're not really a style sheet. They are just your, like your color one, color two, color three that you have assigned. I'm not sure I'm answering the question. Are the templates okay. free and paid accessible for people using screen readers? That is a great question. I believe so. Sorry, that might be a question for Caitlin. And <laughs> so we uh, can allow you guys, Caitlin to answer. To still answer? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're actually still uh, still answering uh, questions in chat. So we can leave that okay. for Caitlin to answer. I believe I'm going to check one more time just to make sure. Is there anything else that you wanted to share, Marisa, before we end? Um, there's a couple of things in my wrap-up that I definitely want to share. Sure. For instance, one of the things that I think is really useful and inspiring, oh gosh, I forgot to show you all my finished annual report. Sorry about that. Um, there you go. But yeah, maybe I can, can I um, stop share? Can I go back to sharing and do that? Please, please go. What? Yes, please. Okay, great. I'm going to, the sharing part is always confusing. Um, They're Acrobat Pro. And here is my annual report that I created from that annual report template. You'll see I added some images of people at the dojo. I made a really clean, simple page with a letter from Mallory Graham, the instructor, chief instructor. I added the mission statement. I added some statistics using the dots that are already in the template. I added some images and some lots of text, but hopefully not too, too overwhelming. This section was pretty hard. And then I added from another template. So this is what I, 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 I urge you guys to check out. There is a template that the learn team, that the, temp, the template team put together with the learn team where they teach you how to use Illustrator, not InDesign, but Illustrator, and um, the templates at the same time. They take you through a series of steps and to create these charts. So I created these charts in Illustrator, and then I brought them into my InDesign document. So that was super cool. I'm not big on data. I don't really understand it a lot, or I'm just not very drawn to it. So. It took me a little bit to, to learn that. So that was really fun. Um, I have some other data here uh, that was part of this template and added some images of the board of directors and a little bit of information for the future and a closing page. So that is the annual report. And if you remember the colorful annual report template that we started with, it's pretty different. So I'm going to go back over to our slides and wrap up unless there's something. Ah, is there a site where I got the template? Yes. Um, so let's go to our wrap up um, next. But I will tell you all that the, you will be getting a resource sheet as well as these slides. And in both cases, we have a link to the Adobe stock um, to the Adobe Stock template uh, that I use, to the Adobe Stock site, and also to some other things I'll go over in a second. So to wrap up, um, there are lots more Adobe apps for you to consider for creating your report. Uh, Adobe Spark is a free app that allows you to easily create pleasing web pages and, vid and videos. Uh, there's also Adobe Creative Cloud all apps available for a discounted rate on TechSoup. And that means it's the Adobe Suite, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite is available as a package. Um, that includes Adobe Premiere Pro, which allows you to edit professional level videos, gives you a higher level of control than Spark. Adobe Illustrator, which is really useful for building infographics and other visuals, usually a lot of flat visuals, they're called vector graphics. Uh, Adobe Photoshop, which at this point is great for doing everything from editing photos, creating collages, to making posters, and you can even edit videos 
using Photoshop. I personally love Photoshop. I love all of these apps, um, but uh, Photoshop is where I started. Uh, but it is a, a steeper, steeper curve in terms of learning than something like Spark. Um, Lightroom CC, the new Lightroom CC, which is different from Lightroom Classic, provides easy ways to make your photos stand out. So lots of choices. You might use them together. Um, I generally use lots of these at the same time. And I believe Adobe, um, sorry, TechSoup also has resources for learning, as does Adobe. This is an image of that template that I mentioned that's a learn template. And I found it really, really interesting. Um, these are my references. Uh, so I have references for you guys of all of those annual reports that you saw earlier for inspiration. Again, you will also get my annual report that I created for Seattle Ikikai. And then there's Adobe, a link to Adobe Stock and a link to the annual report template we used in the webinar, a link to the Adobe Stock Learn templates that I mentioned. Um, just to point out, they are not, they, we don't have InDesign as one of the Learn templates yet. We have Photoshop and Illustrator, and um, I believe that's it. Um, and then, but they are really cool. I recommend you check them out. I also recommend you check out a t this tutorial for using an InDesign with Adobe Stock Template. It takes you through creating a book cover, and it's super cool and uses a lot of the same things that we went over today. So lots to learn, and I wish you lots of luck on your journey. Thank you. Wow, thank you again. We really appreciate um, all of the information that you've provided. And also thank you to the Adobe Template team that have been answering all of the questions here in chat. If we did not get to your question, we do have your email from where you registered. And we will go back through our chat and make sure that we've answered all. And if we've not, we will send you an email with a response. I will also um, immediately after the webinar, you will receive an email with today's presentation along with the links that Marisa mentioned. I also want to mention that we did plan on getting to Adobe Spark, um, but we ran out of time. But uh, no worries, we will include some additional resources in that follow-up email as well. And so again, thank you. Before we go though, it would be great to find out from all of the learners that joined us this morning Please share one thing that you learned from this presentation today. Is there one thing you'll take to your organization or one tool that, that you can use or even a link? There were several links that we chatted out. So please go ahead, take a second, and just share one thing that you learned uh, today in the webinar. We look forward to, to, your, to your feedback. And uh, definitely last but not least, I want to remind you about our upcoming webinars. So we want you to get to know Grant Station on Tuesday, January the 30th. This webinar and tour will cover tips on the most effective ways to use Grant Station, including the extensive funder databases that can help you identify the grant makers most likely to fund your programs and your projects. And on Thursday, February the 1st, join us again for building a grant writing framework for success. This webinar will teach you <clears throat> how to use a program planning framework to plan your grant applications so that they tell a strong and consistent story. So we hope that you can join us. Thank you for your time today. We look forward to connecting with you again. And before we go, we want to say thank you to our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>